Okay, so how do we use these ice tables? We have a really good guided solution, aside from the fact that you use millimoles per liter in 15.1 on page 681. All right, if you want to take a look at that one, it has a full solution available to you, but I'm going to replicate that one here for you. You can see that what we are doing is dealing with the hydrogen iodide equilibrium. You'll notice a change in the arrow. All right, we now use a double arrow to try and illustrate the fact that you have both a forward and a reverse reaction taking place. And we're going to get to an equilibrium uh, balance point at some time in this reaction system. So we can see that it's still running at that nearly 450 degrees. You're beginning with one millimole per liter concentrations of both the reactant hydrogen and the reactant iodine. Of course, the reaction hasn't started yet, so you should have no hydrogen iodide concentration to begin with. All right, let's set up this reaction and set up a ice table uh, from scratch here. And so we would start with our balanced chemical equation, like all stoichiometry does. So there's your hydrogen gas plus your ID gas. We are in an equilibrium, so there's that double arrow. And we'll produce hydrogen iodide gas as a product. Two parts hydrogen iodine on this side, one part in the compound, so I must double up the product. What we're trying to figure out here is what is... Uh, the final concentrations, we even go so far as to figure out a percent reaction. So we're going to have three different sets of conditions. We will have an initial set of concentrations, we will have a changing set of concentrations, and this will be the important part, and we will use that to figure out our equilibrium concentrations. So hence the term or acronym for ICE table. It just stands for initial, change, and equilibrium. We were told that we had a one millimole per liter. Let's change that. I don't need to deal with the metric system on our first example, so let's just make it one mole per liter. So, one mole per liter of gas here would be a concentration of 1.00. Same thing here. All right, and so we have one mole per liter concentrations of our two reactants. That should mean that we have zero for our starting situation here. Now, if you go back to the question, they tell us that the equilibrium concentration of iodine determined by the color intensity of the vessel is determined to be 0.22 moles per liter. So we get a little bit of information on one of our reactants, and we know at equilibrium it is 0.22 moles per liter. So we get information on the change. Well, the changes are the attempt at quanti uh, quant blah, blah, quantitative reaction for forward to reverse product. So this means that the changes are stoichiometric. If we take a look at the concentration change, we can predict the changes for all other things in this reaction. So in our ice table, we're just going to apply our stoichiometry to a different part of the information that we get. So if I started at one mole per liter, and I finished at 0.22 moles per liter, then in this case, my concentration of iodine has changed by 0.78 moles per liter. I can now use this 0.78 to predict the amount of product and the amount of hydrogen that was consumed. If this is the amount or the degree of quantitativeness, sorry Mr. Cowan and uh, <laughs> all the other English teachers for that one, but we do have a number that we can start to use and apply. So, something to remember here is that your changes are stoichiometric. Which means I can use those quantities, I can use any sort of conversions, and I can use that mole fraction to help work this out. So, think about what we know. If iodine changes by 0.78 moles per liter, remember we change the units in this case, All right, because we're dealing with <coughs> concentrations of one liter here, everything is in a one liter vessel, my volume is fixed, then I can just go straight to my mole fraction in this shortcut. My mole fraction would be between, let's say, iodine, and let's say I want to figure out about how much hydrogen I'm going to consume here. 
Well, in your balanced chemical equation, for every one part iodine, it takes one part hydrogen. So if 0.78 moles of iodine are consumed in a one-to-one -one ratio, when you cancel out your iodine here, you find out that you get a 0.78 mole per liter change in hydrogen. Take that back to your table. Would this be an increase of 0.78 or a decrease? I think it's pretty obvious that we would decrease our concentration by that amount. And we would finish off with a 0.22 mole per liter concentration of hydrogen when this thing achieves equilibrium. We have one more to do. All right, much like limiting reagent problems that were tedious in the past, we have that here. I know that my change in iodine is 0.78 moles per liter, but now I'm taking a look at a different ratio. All right, I want to get rid of iodine and I want to get to hydrogen iodide. And you'll notice the mole ratio this time is one part iodine for every two parts hydrogen iodide. So I'm going to make more particles of hydrogen iodide in this particular reaction. And so that works out to 1.56 moles per liter of my hydrogen iodide. Extend this piece of information back to your ice table. All right, we just figured out that this is the change. Now, is this a decrease or an increase? Again, I think it's obvious. You would increase by 1.56 moles per liter. Since I'm starting at zero, my equilibrium would also be this 1.56 moles per liter. So now I have my equilibrium concentrations. I have solved the problem as given in the study uh, sample problem on page 681. I now know what my concentrations will be at equilibrium. All right, in the next couple of examples, we'll take a look at things such as your percent reaction and just take this information one step further. Okay, two more examples to go. I think that will have to happen in the next uh, video. I'll run this one a little bit too long if I try and do it here. What I would do, you're dealing with the same reaction, just different concentrations in question number two on page six of your notes. Maybe try that one first, set up your ice table again, and see if you can get to your concentrations before you log in and take a look at the next video. If there's an answer in the notes, you can try and apply that percentage reaction or percent yield uh, formula and see if you can come up with the answer. Check uh, your work against the next video and see how you did. Good luck with it, guys.